Hey, do you remember all those funny memes about AI being bad at generating people? Those are not proper fingers. LOL. This is not Channing Tatum face. Rotful. Well, it's time to stop laughing at Channing Tatum and start being vigilant. The technology moved so far that AI is now generating some excellent faces. Faces that are better than those coming from the mother nature herself. Human face is the main and first element of social interactions. The ability to read as much information about the face owner as possible from the physiognomy is a great evolutionary value. Indeed, it turns out that this relatively small element of our body is a great cheat sheet that everyone can use. And we are surprisingly good at judging others by their faces. We only need a 100 millisecond exposure to evaluate the person's attractiveness, likability, trustworthiness or competence. Watching the face longer changed only how sure we were about our scoring, not the scoring itself. And since we love faces so much, there were a lot of photos, portraits, selfies just sitting around that we could use as a dataset to train a machine learning model. This way we acquired a quick way to recognize faces, but with the introduction of generative networks, we could produce brand new ones. Everyone can visit this person does not exist page to get some freshly baked profile of a non-existing human-like entity. Just look at this majestic mullet. This technology can be utilized for more things than just entertainment. For example, it is helping to artificially age faces on childhood photos to help find long lost children. But it is also used by bad agents to anonymize wrongdoing, push propaganda, commit fraud. And as the paper from 2022 showed, not only anonymize, push and commit, but make the whole thing more trustworthy. In an experiment published in Psychological and Cognitive Sciences, Sophie Nightingale and Henny Farid focused on creating a benchmark, evaluating the photorealism of AI-generated faces versus the boring, real ones. On top of that, researchers wanted to check if there is any difference when we evaluate synthetic faces, for example, when we judge if we can trust the owner of that face. Untrained participants had to run through 128 randomized portraits, evaluating if the person is real or not. Results were quite eye-opening. Accuracy of judging if the face was real or not was around 48%, basically close to just guessing, tossing a coin. Participants that received some training in spotting AI-generative content did a bit better, bumping the accuracy to 59%, so slightly above pure chance. Here you have an example of the most and least accurately classified faces, with R being the real face and S being dreamed by a machine. Interestingly, the trained portrait reviewers were given feedback after each face evaluation, but their accuracy did not improve over time. During the analysis, the researchers spotted that, for both male and female synthetic faces, white faces were the least accurately classified, and male white faces were less accurately classified than female wild faces. They hypothesized that with a bigger number of white male faces in the dataset used to train the model, those type of faces are just generated in a more realistic fashion. Either way, it looks like we are past the point when we can reliably tell the difference between AI-generated face and a real one, especially if it is wild male face. On full throttle, we jumped over the uncanny valley, did a backflip and landed in a very weird place. And it's not the end of the AI trickery. When evaluating the faces on a scale from very untrustworthy to very trustworthy, artificially generated profiles were skewed to the right. Real faces received 4.48 average rating on the 7-point scale, while synthetic faces 4.82, receiving a relatively small but statistically significant bump of 7.7%. Three out of four most trustworthy faces were synthetic. All four least trustworthy faces were born naturally. So we have a situation when we can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not but we are judging generated faces as more trustworthy. Tricky. That's why the researchers encourage those developing those technologies to consider whether the associated risks are greater than their benefits. If so, 
then we discourage the development of technology simply because it is possible. But it's not that AI is generating faces very similar to nature. It looks like AI is generating human faces better than humans. And the next study tried to provide some answers to this emerging question about synthetic faces. What gives? The paper, published this month, started with a successful replication of findings from Nightingale and Farid. Again, the researchers have shown that white AI faces were judged as human significantly more often than white human faces. In contrast, performance for white human faces did not differ significantly from chance. The replicated effect, as the authors write, was robust. Suffice to say that four out of five faces, judged most often as human, were AI-generated. Out of the five faces reviewed most often as synthetic, four faces were natural. That's just nuts. Authors of the paper created a term for this phenomenon, AI hyperrealism, and started to dig deeper into it. Participants in their study, beside evaluating portraits, had to say how confident they felt and which cues they used to make their judgment. As for the confidence, well, the results are kinda concerning. We found that participants who were the worst at detecting AI faces had the poorest insights into their abilities. Basically, indicating that the tendency for AI hyperrealism was exacerbated by overconfidence. People who made the most errors in their task were the most confident. That's already a great start. But what about the face cues? Researchers bucketed all the data points participants provided during the experiment and created this beautiful wheel of how to spot the Terminator. Ten of the most common mentioned attributes, like the image quality or having smooth skin, were picked to study this AI bias further. We are reacting differently to those synthetic faces, so there must be some kind of specific thing that we don't consider less human, but somehow even more human, and maybe differences in those attributes can steer us towards understanding. Researchers sprinkled the analysis with four more attributes derived from the face-space theory. This theory proposes a hypothetical multidimensional space in which faces are coded along unspecified dimensions according to how much they differ from the average face located at the center. Basically, you have different axes for each attribute and you can code each face by putting it somewhere on that space, with extremely average faces sitting in the cozy middle. Those four bonus attributes were averageness, memorability, familiarity and attractiveness. This way, researchers could check which attributes made faces look real, even if, or especially, when, the, when they were AI-generated. And, well, adding the face-space theory attributes was a good decision. AI faces were significantly more average, less distinctive, familiar and attractive, and less memorable than human faces. Those are the basic, simple ingredients to create a better-than-human AI face. And those make sense if you recall that the model was trained on a bigger number of white male faces. It's not only renders them more accurately, but it's making them more average, so they become more familiar, attractive, and less memorable, but somehow trustworthy. And as humans, we have trouble to comprehend that, hey, this face is a bit of average, that's weird, or see a sense of familiarity as a red flag. But what can we do about it? Faces are everywhere, generative technology is being democratized, so bad things are going to happen. As we can see from both papers, our brains just cannot keep up. We are basically guessing if a portrait of a person we are writing with is real, and we need to have a reason to be skeptical in the first place. There are some automated solutions like V7 fake profile detector from extension mentioned by the authors, but it works only with the style GAN faces, not the style GAN2 images. So we have this nice antagonistic coevolution of tools trying to be better at finding fakes and fake get generators trying to produce more realistic outcomes. And we are just sitting there in the middle trying to figure out if that's really my boss asking me to transfer the money to another account. I mean, it's their face. It's their voice. 
The great thing about the second study is that the work that was done to uh, assess human and synthetic faces within the space of those 14 attributes was then used to create a classification model of their own. A faker catchy catch, I believe the technical term is. The model was able to classify if a face is real or unreal with 94% of accuracy. What's interesting about this model is that it works based on perceptual attributes. Other AI detection algorithms, just like generative models, are black boxes. You train them and hope for the best. Here at least, we know the basics of how the faces are evaluated and with more research done within the face space theory, we could improve the detector further. Or we can find people naturally gifted in catching AI decoys, like the one participants that achieved 80% accuracy. We could train them and give them a mission to find and hunt all the repli- I mean fake AI images. Well, hope you like those two fascinating papers on the edge of technology and psychology, because there is more to come. Please like the video if that's true and subscribe for more similar, hopefully better content. See you in the next one.